Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we create this simple text frame for Final Cut Pro 10 in Apple Motion. Now, the nice thing about this text frame, we'll just kind of jump in and have a little look, is that we can actually, when we change the amount of text in there, it will rescale the text frame. So you can see as I'm adding or removing text from that text frame, modifying the text, adding line breaks, it's actually gonna to wrap to that box. And we're gonna have a look at how we build in a few different bits of functionality here. So we can modify the roundness of the corners here. We can change the fill color. We can turn on and off the fill. And we can also modify some other elements such as the width of the margins. So the width of our text frame itself and kind of where that sits within our design. Uh, and then also the amount of padding on the left and right and top and bottom, we can modify as well, um, as well as the color and width of the outline. So let's dive into Apple Motion and have a look at how we create this simple text frame with these nice levels of editability for Final Cut Pro 10. So we'll jump across here to Apple Motion. And basically we're gonna start with a brand new project here. We're gonna start with a Final Cut Pro title and it's gonna be 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second is fine, and we'll hit open. And essentially, what we're gonna to begin to work with here um, is the text frame itself. So we have our title set up here already, and then we're gonna add a rectangle there that is gonna kind of lock to that title, move around with it, and then eventually rescale with it as well. So let's set that up. So we'll move our title up to the, the middle here, and I'm gonna align my text to the center. So I'm gonna come across the inspector with my text selected and just align this centrally. And then we'll come back to the, the selection tool here. Now, the first thing we wanna build here is a rectangle. So we'll grab a rectangle here. And we're gonna draw out a rectangle here. And it doesn't really matter too much the size because we're gonna lock that to the size of the, the text here. So we'll change the color of our background text frame here. I'm gonna pick out a color that I've used before. So we'll go for this green as our text background. And we're gonna move the rectangle behind the type so that we can see those layered up here. So we've got our type text here options, and then we've got our rectangle below that. You can see that down in our layers. So once we've got our rectangle made and below our text, we're gonna to come to the behaviors menu up here and basic motion and choose the align to option. And essentially what we're gonna do is drag the type text here to our align to option and that's gonna mean that the, it's gonna align the center of that rectangle to the center of the, the text. So you can see basically in the rules here, we're gonna align the rectangle center to the type text here center. And that's gonna keep things nice and lined up. So if we select our type text here box and we move this around, you can see our rectangle is now gonna move with that and it will do the same in Final Cut Pro 10 as well. So now what we wanna do is we wanna link the width and height of the rectangle to the width and height of the, the text as it kind of fills the frame here. So we're gonna select our rectangle and we'll come across to the properties and we'll come down to the scale properties here and we're gonna right click here on the X properties and add a preset behavior and link. And then we're gonna drag down the type layer to our object source. And then under compatible parameters, we're gonna to go to object attributes, size and for the X, we're gonna choose width. And then for the target parameter, we're gonna apply that to the object, to the shape, the size, and the width. And you won't see any change there, but basically what that means is that when we do things like adding outline and that type of thing, it's not gonna distort the outline. So these are the settings we want here. And then basically for our scale here, we want our width to be a little bit bigger than the type. So essentially we're gonna type in 1.1 here and that is just gonna bump that width a little bit bigger than the width of the type, so we get a little bit of padding around that. And we're gonna add one more link here, so we'll come back to the properties, and we're gonna choose the Y property, so I'm gonna right click, we'll come to add parameter behavior, and link, we'll drag down the type text here options, and then we're gonna choose that same object attributes, size, and this time height. You'll see the height snap to our title size, and then we'll go to target parameters, object, shape, size, and height. And we'll change the scale here to 1.2. And that will just give that nice little bit of padding around there. So if we save this now, we'll go to file, save, and we're gonna save this into my titles. We'll call this rounded text frame demo. 
and publish that. And now straight away, if we come back to Final Cut Pro, we'll go to our start here project and we're gonna drag down a piece of video here. We'll drag this water park down and I'm gonna use Shift and Z just so we can see the whole timeline here. We'll come up to our type properties into my titles and then we've got the rounded text demo which is the one we just made and you'll see our text box is here and if we go to lorem ipsum which is the site i like to use for placeholder text we'll just select a couple lines of placeholder text here come back to final cut pro and we will paste that in there and you'll see that is now wrapping to the box so if we come to the properties we don't have any published parameters for our text frame here which is what we're going to set up next but basically if we add in some line breaks here and change the size of this text box in particular the width of it you'll see eventually with those simple line breaks it will actually wrap to that frame so we can do a line to the left or a line to the right and we're getting that text frame wrapping nicely so just with those quick few steps in Apple Motion, you can get a kind of nice text frame. And wherever we move this now, the text frame is gonna have that box behind it follow it. So let's add in some more editable parameters here to this type plugin for Final Cut Pro. So we'll come back into Apple Motion and we wanna publish some other parameters here so we've got a little bit more control over our overall design. So I'm gonna come to the type text here layer. So I actually wanna reduce down the size of this. So if I double click in here, I can change the width of this. And basically what this is changing is under my text frame options and the layout, I'm changing the, the right margin and the left margin here. So if I type in say 500, it's gonna set my left margin at 500. And we'll type in 1220 for the right margin which I think gives us just kind of eyeballing it about the right settings here. So I'm gonna publish the left margin and I'm gonna publish the right margin. We save that now. We'll delete this instance of that type style and then we'll drag down this new rounded text frame. And basically now when we paste in our type, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. It's not gonna run quite so quickly to the edge and you can see when we start to align things, we've got this a nice size that we can work with a bit better. And if we want to do different alignments, um, then we get that nice level of control. But also if we come into our type parameters, we can modify that right and left margin a little bit by dragging these sliders or by dragging over the numbers if we know kind of more clearly what we want. So you can see we've got a nice kind of wrappable text box that we can now move around and we've got a nice level of control over this we can center it and it works really well so let's publish some other parameters here for this particular text frame so now for the type itself that's kind of sorted because we have the, all the control we need for the actual type itself such as the the type color down here under face um, such as the the font and the size of the font so we don't need to modify that we just need to publish some parameters um, for this rectangle in the background so that we have a bit more control over it so we'll come back into apple motion and we'll select our rectangle so the first thing we want to publish is the color of the rectangle so we can change that and then we'll also publish the option to turn on and off the fill so this top dark gray bar there We'll turn on the outline and we'll publish the color of the outline. We'll publish the width of the outline and we'll publish the ability to turn the outline on and off. So if we come up to our project here, you can see the different things that we've just published. Um, so basically we have our outline here, the ability to turn that on and off. We have our fill color, the ability to turn that on and off. And we can come back to our rectangle and our fill properties let's publish the opacity as well so that we can make it slightly opaque and then we'll also if we come to link one we'll publish the scale of the padding that we have here so that means that we can change the the padding on the y-axis so we can change the, the padding on the left and right if we come back to project here we'll just change this to padding l slash r and then we'll come back to our 
link here and we'll publish this. And I think I might have got this the wrong way around. I think this is padding left and right and this is padding top and bottom. So let's just see if I got that right. We can reorganize these here. So we'll save this. So now if we come into Final Cut Pro, we will delete this instance of our type here. We'll drag down our new demo. Let's just drop some extra type in here. So now in our settings, you can see we can change the background color. We can change easily the opacity of that background color, which we've kind of got in the wrong spot. We need to reorganize that. We can change the padding on the left and right. Yeah, we've got that the right way around now. And the padding at the top and bottom, so we can increase that. And then we'll add one extra feature in here, as well as reorganizing that opacity. So let's just drag the opacity to below fill color. And then we will come to our rectangle. We're gonna come into the geometry and we're gonna change the roundness to six and we will publish that and save that. So now if we delete this instance of our plugin, drag this down to the timeline, then essentially we can drop our text in here, come into our properties, we can change the roundness of those edges, we can change the padding going up here, we can change the width of that border as well as its color, we can change the fill opacity, so perhaps if we want to darken the background behind there, we would just make it black and then we can just modify the background there. So we still have a little bit of that image poking through. We can turn the fill completely on and off. We can change the left and right margin so we can slim this down or make it wider if we want to make it wider. And then we can also relocate it. And then obviously, as well as being able to relocate it, we can change the size of our type and it is going to change the size of our text frame as well. And we can modify all the settings here accordingly. So we've got this really nice level of control now over our text frame, how it functions, how the alignment works, the width of our border and so on and so forth. We could build an animation in and out um, for this. If you'd like to see that in a tutorial, uh, then do leave a comment below. I'd love to kind of hear your suggestions for other motion tutorials, um, but hopefully this is useful if you are looking to create your own text designs. We obviously can animate this if we want to with the built-in Final Cut Pro 10 animations and at a basic level, we can highlight it, hold down Command and tap T, and then we have a simple kind of fade in and fade out of our type style. Now, one other thing uh, to mention before we finish up, which was in the example, is that I had broken out one line. If we wanna edit different lines of type in Final Cut Pro, I just align all this to the left, then we can highlight the type here and that allows us to sort of increase individual lines of type. So we can kind of get that nice level of control, but that's all done within the built-in type styles. That's not an extra thing that we have to do in Apple Motion. So we can build in some nice detail in our type by using the type editor in Final Cut Pro changing the color underneath the face options here, which a lot of people comment is often a little bit hidden. And you can see we can start to build some really nice type elements ourselves in Apple Motion. Obviously usable, reusable. We could set the colors that we're using in our corporate designs or our YouTube videos as the default and then have them as editable as well. But that would mean we wouldn't need to kind of go in and change the colors straight away. Apple Motion is definitely a real nice add-on to Final Cut Pro 10 that I would recommend people look at. So hopefully this tutorial has been useful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then please do leave comments below and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.